हम करेंगे हमेशा तात्री सैदी 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 हम मुजाहिद तेरे हम तेरे लश्करी हम तेरे Assalamualaikum Haris. Wassalam. You know, we just finished our 7 year program of Jamia with the Canada and now we're considered missionaries. Alhamdulillah. Talk to me bro, how do you feel go back to even before 7 years what drove you to this road or down this road? Honestly, I I think it's like a big blessing from Allah Taala. I don't think that you included I I think I'd speak for all my brothers who've been through this journey that I don't think any of them actually thought that they could do this with Allah Taala's blessing and Hazur's prayers. No doubt. I remember one day thinking that I wanted to serve Jamaat, but I didn't know what to do, right? And I had obviously Murabiyan around me as well, but I didn't know exactly what Jamia was. And I think this is a big thing that a lot of people think that they think that Jamia students who come to Jamia or people that serve Jamaat and as well, they have some sort of idea of what they're going to face in the field or what they're going to see. But to the reality, to speak for reality, no one no one can fully know like what you're going to do right yeah. and i know that you and me as well right when we came first year our whole perspective of life just changed right and now as well right it's it's different every every day is different every week is different every month is different every year is different and your whole perspective changes so that was a big thing like coming in a jamia at first like trying to understand what our life is going to be it's never going to work out it's no i, I fully agree i remember i mean like you said service to jamaat right like it's that feeling you get at like jalsa or ishtama right where those three or four days or maybe a week where you're working and you get that feeling like i want this every day yeah. you're with your brothers yeah. uh you know you're joking around but at the end of the day you have a certain goal which is you know that those days of blessings and spirituality yeah and so i think that feeling i mean i can speak for myself maybe you agree as well as you wanted that feeling to be there every single day basically to bottle that up exactly right and exactly. to have that every time yeah. yeah speaking of that so tell me when was it maybe it was a year during high school or even before that where you were like you know this is an option or maybe you didn't even know about jamia I mean, you know, you've told me a few times that right, there was times in your life where you didn't know what Jamia was, yeah. and yet you're still, you know, seven years later you're a Marabi now. So tell me a little bit about that. It started, I think, when I went to Pakistan. Obviously, I spent six years there. I told you, I still had that. Okay, you were in an environment where everything was Jamaat focused and Jamaat related, right? Obviously, you had, you know, your your own life as well, but. the the presence of jamaat there was a big thing so when hazur hazur amir milabi's helper came in 2016 and we had jalsa that whole atmosphere it was so inviting that i wanted to be a part of it like i wanted to take it with me wherever i went and then i went for waqf yarzi in 2017 with khudam ali the khudam ali amir trip and then with the fall amir as well and i got to witness that same environment but it was it was on steroids you know like you you went to masjid fazal you got to see Hazur every day you got to pray namaz behind him right and it was like how do i help this person the person who's doing the most for jamaat the most for islam right the most for the world how do i help this person right and then i came back and i realized you know what the best thing i can do is devote my life right? it's it's, uh, it's amazing you say that because i remember in 2016 as well you know uh, at the time i was helping with mta so those feelings were there that you want to bottle up like you were saying and it goes back to that speech that Hazur gave to Waqfi in that you know these are the different options and number one priority is what being a murabi line muntakhib karne ke bare mein Waqfi ne naw ladke pehle bhi main keh chuka hu ke jamiat mein ja kar murabi aur walik banne ko pehli tarjeeh de is waqt iski zarurat hai जमात फैल रही है अल्लाह तौर से ना सिर्फ उन मुल्कों में नई जमातें कायम हो रही हैं जहां जमात के क्याम को लंबा अरसा गुजर गया है बल्कि नए नए ममालिक भी अल्लाह ताली जमात को ताफर मारा है और वहाँ जमातें कायम हो रही हैं और हमें हर मुल्क में बेशुमार मुरबियान और मुबलगिन चाहिए And so you think to yourself, as a wakfino or even as a regular khadam, um, you know, what's the one thing that the one person 
that can guide any person on this planet wants, right? Or that one number one priority, and it's to become a murabi. Exactly. So for me, even though at the time, you know, I was in high school, finishing up my final year, uh, I had a lot of universities lined up. For me, it's as if those opportunities just vanished. Yeah, they were there, but for me, they didn't really matter. For me, the only thing that matters was the number one priority that Hazur, may Allah be his helper, had plotted out for Waqfeen. And then you mentioned 2017. I think you remember this little funny story. Uh, this is before even, you know, we interviewed and saw each other. I had no idea who you were, yeah. but I think we were both going to the train station after yeah. our uh, Waqf Arzi. Yeah. And the person that was taking us, I think he spotted you and one of your friends on the road walking yeah. to the train station yeah. and we picked you up. So I had met you, my future classmate, before even knowing you. So that was a cool little thing. But yeah, that Waqf Arzi trip was another thing where those feelings existed again yeah. that, you know, you don't want that brotherly feeling, the continuous uh, work that you put in, the effort that you put in for the, you know, even though you don't think that you're spreading the message of Islam, maybe literally or uh, in that physical thing that you're doing, but those little feelings that you get, that life of blessings, those moments of spirituality, you don't want those to vanish. And I think me and you are on the same page when it comes to those um, you know bursts of energy you just don't want them to be bursts you want them to be something that is your atmosphere on a day-to-day yeah. -day thing yeah. but seven years are not i mean right now they look like they're small but you know there was a lot of moments in our jamia journey being classmates you want to maybe mention some of those things honestly where do i start man there's there's just so many things that you know like you go through together but one thing i would like to start off with is that obviously we talk about this a lot of the time is that if you look at any other profession in the world, right? You look at any other university, you look at any other college, I don't think there's any place out there where you can say that the people with you, they're actually your brothers. Like this, this is like family I got to choose, right? Like you get to sleep in the same hostel, right? Eat, drink, sports, study, right? It's the same, like your whole day is together, right? And after seven years, it's hard to, help other people understand what this person means to me, right? I can tell my family that this is my brother, right? But they don't know like, what, that what type of brother exactly that is, right? That means. And obviously, like after seven years, like you know like one day is going to come where you're not going to see each other, right? Yeah. That much. Obviously, inshallah, there's going to be places where you're going to meet in the future. Hopefully, you get posted together. You don't know, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But that bond is just something different, man. You know, you can't find it anywhere else. I haven't, I've yet to come to see someone come to me and tell me okay yo I've studied in this university and I have that same bond right mm -hmm. and that for itself is a big motivating factor for a lot of guys especially who come for the BT camp during the during the year right they see that they get to spend time with their brothers right but the memories that you build together are, aren't just like any ordinary memory mm -hmm. right those memories are like engraved in you and you take them along your whole life like the lessons you learn there are basically building blocks for your future life in the Yeah, I couldn't right? say it better myself because you know you have different personalities exactly uh, within one hostel. Maybe there's 14 of you yeah. of your classmates or different people that you know you're you're living with these people, and it's not just like your family at home where when you go off to school or work you don't see those families. Exactly. You're going to work with these people, you're going to classes with these people, you're going to the gym, you're going to lunch, and then at the end of the day, you know you're all sleeping in one big hostel yeah. and you get to you know meet different personalities different characteristics and you learn you know how in to the compromise future. Yeah. exactly yeah. right so you learn a lot of different skills whether it's patience um, or various other social skills that can help you after you know obviously we're missionaries so we know you know when you meet a certain type of person or personality trait in, in the field you know how to help them uh, whether they need help or you know how to take advice from them sometimes it's difficult to be in a compromising situation where you have to accept your own faults right so that's very helpful yeah. and um, you learn how to take advice you know it's difficult especially being khudam uh, to take advice from someone you know being in a situation where to you humble know, yourself exactly right yeah. accepting your own mistakes but i think you know there's no other place better than when you're surrounded by someone that you're doing anything 24 7 together right exactly. so that, that's the best situation possible and it's not even like you basically think you're inferior to the other person, right? Everyone has a different mindset. Everyone comes from a different background. And everyone has something special to bring to the table, right? And that's one thing that you really benefit from. You know, like some people might be better in sports. Some people might be better in like studies, right? And to actually like 
ex uh, extract all that all all of that that experience or I would say basically get the better of that bond right for lack of a better word it's it's a big blessing in a sense right because you become a well-rounded person at the end of the day right you take part from everyone right and to take that forward to just to talk about the memories that you mentioned to even say that if I get in an argument with someone right and if I don't like that person you can't run away from them you're there together right at the end of the you're still spending seven years together right so you learn to really compromise on a lot of things you learn to how to, you learn how to deal with anger issues you learn how to deal with different types of you know issues that arise between I would say brothers in a sense that you can find anywhere else like for example if I was outside if I didn't like someone right or if I had a problem with anyone else I'd simply wouldn't just talk to the person right but you don't get to do that over here you know you have to stick with that person you have to learn to bend according to the will right yeah. as a Masih al-Islam he states that you know friendship with Allah Ta'ala is that sometimes you listen to him right and then Allah Ta'ala listens to his banda mm -hmm. right and it's the same thing you see over here right like you have to you have to talk to your friends you have to listen to them and then they have to listen to you as well right so you really learn how to build that skill over here yeah man I fully agree with everything you said and um, I felt exactly the same the last seven years but now the seven years have finished and now we're you know considered to be in the field still going under the training session but that 18 hour schedule right that Hazur has laid out for us yeah doesn't exist anymore now we're on our own there's no um, supervisor or teacher watching over no our one steps to push you no one to hold exactly, your hand in that right? sense, yeah. like there's no more of a safety bubble now yeah. you know Jamaat has cons or Jamia has basically said that you know we send them off now the Jamaat is you know they're 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 your responsibility they're responsible enough to know what's right and what's wrong exactly. what to do um, at the right times um, that being said right like in this training program you know, some of us aren't living together. Some of us are in the guest house, depending on, you know, whether they're married or live in different parts of the area. But the point is, you know, we're still coming to work together, but in different, uh, you know, departments, right? Uh, depending on where we're temporary posted. Exactly. And that's what, Monday to Thursday. And then on the weekends, you know, we have our local jamas where we're posted. And everything that we were taught to do, we're doing it in a practical sense. Um, so it's basically, uh, you know, doing everything you've been taught but practically, this is like the practical part of yeah. your theological training. That, Basically, Jamia you know, was just theory. Exactly. And then this is actually applying exactly. that theory. Exactly. Yeah. No, I agree with you 100%. The, the big shock is just like the responsibility that kicks in. In Jamia, you don't have that responsibility behind you. Obviously, you can tell a person that, you know, when you go in the field, people are going to expect this from you, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to do this, 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 this. And then maybe you're going to face these repercussions, right? This is going to happen. But... Once you actually go into the field, right, then it kicks in, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're like, okay, wow, you know, this is a big responsibility, like, you know. Yeah. And then the basic thing that you divert back to is prayers, right? And you're like, okay, Allah Ta'ala, give me the strength to do this. Because you, at the end of the day, you, me, we both know, like, we're weak people. We can't do this by ourselves, right? But that whole schedule that's there is to help you train into the field. And obviously, it takes time, right? Obviously, we know spending this couple months that there there's been times where like oh wow man this is tough right but it takes time like people are luckily we have good mentors we have good missionaries in front of us to look up to them to actually learn from them and to and they'll they'll guide us along the way and they'll tell us that you know it's not going to be easy it'll take time to get there eventually right and that whole that whole culture that whole you know that whole atmosphere has been just it's 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 a challenge to get into, but once you're on that path, once you're on that stride, I think eventually it becomes easier. Yeah, no doubt. And I think it just comes down to our final responsibility, right? It's what Allah Taala outlines in the Holy Quran, which is, you know, who is better in speech than he who invites someone to Allah Taala or to religion, right? And that's what our job is. People often look at missionaries, people in the Jamaat, you know, maybe the Khudam is like, or oh, your job is to, you know. Um, Maybe try to get the Khudam to come to Jamia, right? That's not necessarily our job. You know, as much as you know, we would love for the young Khudam to look at Jamia as an option, our job at the end of the day is to show everyone what we have as missionaries. And that is one guiding light, which is the Khalifa and yeah. his religion of Islam and Ahmadiyyat, right? Going back to the life of the Holy Prophet and then exactly. the Promised Messiah and Hazur, uh, may Allah be his helper, right? These three figures... Um, you know, especially Khilafat for us right now because it's a living establishment 
is what we're trying to show the people, um, whether they're in the Jamaat or outside the Jamaat, that this is all that matters at the end of the day. Yeah. Me and you are just two, you know, our, we try our best to be humble servants, you know, may Allah Ta'ala, you know, cover our mistakes and whatnot, but at the end of the day, that's all that matters. And, um, you know, seven years later, you know, I think we both ponder sometimes whether, you know, we we do justice, we did justice in Jama if, if we did it or not, and if we are doing justice to yeah, that commitment, yeah, for sure, for you know, sure. that's my prayer that Allah Ta'ala makes us, you know, first of all, you know, humble servants of Jamaat and inshallah, you know, Sultan in this year of Khalafat. And that's, yeah, that is the end goal, that to become the best tool or the best servant for our beloved Khalifa. May Allah be a salt person. That's it, inshallah. It was good talking to you, man. It was good talking to you too, bro. Yeah. See you in the field, man. Inshallah.